Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the CSS width and height properties, which are of course used to set the width and height of an element. Now, as we've seen in previous lessons, there are many different types of units that we can use in CSS. Some are useful for static layouts, whilst others may help with dynamic layouts like responsive design. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Let's put some uh, divs on the page here. Let's just go for a div with an ID of red. Okay, and let's just copy this and create another div, but this time with an ID of blue. Okay, let's go to our style.css file. And first then, let's select our div with an ID of red. And let's give this a, uh, let's give it a width of 200 pixels, okay? And a height of, let's also say 200 pixels. So we, we create a square here. And let's give it a background color of red. Okay, so there it is. Now let's do the same for our other div with an ID of blue. So let's just copy this through. This time we'll say a div with an ID of blue. Change this to blue. Okay, so on the screen then here we have two divs, okay, two squares. This one has a height of 200 pixels and a width of 200 pixels, and this one also has the same uh, width and height of 200 pixels. Now notice that I specified the width in pixels. So that means that no matter what the size of this screen, these divs will always remain 200 pixels. So if I expanded the screen here, okay, these are still 200 pixels. Now you might say to yourself, well, of course they're 200 pixels because you've specified them to be 200 pixels. Why would they be anything else? Well, actually, don't forget, back in our lesson on CSS units, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link somewhere so you can go and check it out. We saw that there are different ways and different types of units that we can use. So we can actually specify our width in terms of a percentage. So I'm actually going to change this to width of 50%. And you'll see that what that's done is it has set the width of our blue square to be 50% of the screen. So now take a look to see what happens when I actually expand the screen. You can see that the blue has actually expanded. It's actually grown larger here. And this red div here has remained the same. This red div here is always 200 pixels, whereas this here now is a lot more. So I've actually got a Google Chrome uh, extension here. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But this essentially tells you the, the width and height of your current uh, current screen. So the width of this screen is currently 1,750 pixels, okay? Meaning that this blue div here has a width in pixels of 1,750 divided by two, which is, let's see, 500, 350, 875, I believe. Yeah, 875. So, the width of our blue div here is 875 pixels. If we shrink this down, the width now would be 610, which is the total width of our screen here, divided by two because we've set this to be 50%. So the width of this blue div now is 305. Okay, 610 divided by two is 305. And of course, if we set our screen to be 400 pixels in width, so let's go right down to 400 right there this is now 200 pixels which is exactly what our red div is as well so as you can see then specifying our width in terms of percentages really helps with ensuring that your elements look good on small devices such as uh, tablets or phones now the other thing to mention here is that our width does not affect the padding border or margin of our element okay so let's take a look at an example of that First of all, then let's uh, let's get rid of this blue one here. Okay, and let's give our red div here. Let's give it a margin of um, I don't know. Let's just say five pixels all the way around. Let's give it a border of ten pixels. Sorry, ten pixels. Solid. Yeah, black is fine. Okay, and let's give it a padding of let's go for twenty pixels side. Okay, so immediately then you would have noticed that our square here seems to have grown in size, but we didn't actually change the width of this, the width is still 200 pixels, all we did was change some, uh, some other properties here, such as margin border and padding. So what's going on here? Well, to understand what's going on, let's actually right click this and click on inspect. Again, I'm in Google Chrome. This opens up the Google Chrome developer tools. And first of all, let's select our element. So it is the div with an ID of red. Okay. 
Now the dev tools in Google Chrome come with this really cool feature here that show you the width, padding, border, and margin of your element. Okay, so the content of our element is represented by this uh, blue color here. Okay, the padding is represented by this green color here. Border is this one here, and then finally margin is this here. And as you hover over each property, you can actually see it highlighted in the window. Okay, so there's the border, there's the padding, there's the actual content, and this is the margin. Okay, so we set our element to be 200 pixels wide. Okay, and that's what we've got here 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Our padding is 20 pixels all the way around, the border is 10 pixels all the way around. And finally, the margin is five pixels all the way around. So what's going on here? We set the width to 200 pixels, and yet our square, as you can see, is larger than 200 pixels. Well, this is because whatever we specify on the width does not affect the padding, border, or margin of the element. So although we've specified a width of 200 pixels, we also specified a padding of 20 pixels, a border of 10 pixels, and a margin of five pixels. Now, the margin doesn't really affect the size of our element because as you can see this is simply the spacing outside of our element but the padding and the border do affect the size of our element so the width of this square is now 200 plus 20 which is 220 plus 10 is 230 so that's 230 on this side and then here plus 20 that's 250 plus another 10 that's 260 okay so it's 10 plus 20 plus 200 for the width plus 20 plus 10 so in total then this has a width of not 200 pixels, but 260 pixels. This is often the cause of um, much problems and, and frustration um, in the uh, web development world, because sometimes people are just stumped. They, they don't understand why this is happening. But luckily, CSS gives us a really nice fix, and that fix is box sizing, okay? So if we set this to box sizing, border box, you can see there's been a change there. Now what this does is this includes the padding and the border of our element within whatever we specify here, okay? So we specify 200 pixels and we have a 200 pixel square. Remember the margin doesn't affect us because that's outside of our element. It's not actually affecting anything inside the element. So now that we've added box sizing border box, let's actually right click this and go to the dev tools and let's see what's going on. So. Once again, let's select our div, which is um, this one here. Okay, and let's see what we've got here. Okay, so now then, the content has a width of 140 pixels because it's taken into account that we want the total width of this to be 200 pixels, which is what we specified here. So 140 plus 20, which is 160, plus 10, which is 170, and then on this side, plus 20, which is 190, and finally plus 10, which equals 200 pixels. Okay, so box size and border box is really useful. And what most developers do is they'll actually put this into their universal styling up here. So they'll say for all the elements, they want to specify what the width is, okay? So there you have it guys, that's all about the width and height properties in CSS. You also got some bonuses in there as well with the uh, box sizing border box. But for now, get practicing with this. Go ahead and create your own colored squares and play around with different pixels and different units as well, such as percentages or even centimeters. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you back here on the next one.